Now, the Smith Institute is a charity set up in memory of the former Labour leader John Smith. It is also very close, very, very close, to the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Gordon Brown. Given that charities are not supposed to be involved in party political work, has the hospitality the Smith Institute received in number 11 Downing Street put it in such a privileged position its charity status can now be questioned? Michael Crick investigates. The stateroom in 11 Downing Street. With the tenant of this official residence expected to move next door shortly, there's growing focus on the Chancellor's chums and advisers and who takes tea in Gordon Brown's house. After the Labour Party leader John Smith died in 1994, a number of his close friends got together and decided that one of the best ways to commemorate his life in politics would be to set up a think tank. Hence the Smith Institute, founded four years after John Smith's funeral in 1998 to pursue that age-old socialist puzzle, a theme to both Smith and Gordon Brown, how to combine enterprise with fairness. But the Institute was soon seen as Brown's personal think tank. It was run from the start by Wilf Stevenson, a friend of the Chancellor's since university. Mr Stevenson had Brown as his best man at his wedding and he's tipped for a top policy job in a Brown government. If you look at the list of publications that they've produced, you will see a very, very strong Brownite influence. But it's not a bad thing. I mean, there, there are plenty of Blairites involved as well. But, you know, when, you, when your best friend is running an organisation, you would understand that you would have some influence with it. Can it be described as a sort of independent, non-partisan think tank that isn't committed in any way? Well, I wouldn't describe it as that. And certainly at Westminster, it's regarded as the Brown think tank. Legally, to keep its status as a charity, the Smith Institute must not be politically partisan, yet it shares its offices near London's Victoria Station with the left-wing Statesman magazine, owned by the wealthy Labour MP Geoffrey Robinson, a long-standing Brown ally who once gave the Institute money. What's more, the Institute holds almost half its events in the Chancellor's official home, number 11. The latest only yesterday, though Newsnight wasn't allowed to film it. Another just last Wednesday. The Chancellor says he's keen for charities to use his home. But today, the Treasury told Newsnight that of 20 or so charity events held here in the last six months, 11 or 12 were by the Smith Institute. The other nine, by eight other different charities combined. Not one other think tank used the building. The director of the Smith Institute, Will Stevenson, has told me that they generally aim to hold 25 or 26 meetings a year in 11 Downing Street, almost half their annual program. And he agrees that that means they must have held more than 200 meetings there since the Institute was founded nine years ago. He says that people are much more likely to come if they hold meetings at 11 Downing Street than if they're held somewhere else. It's a conducive location, he argues especially when they're aiming to influence people within the Whitehall village. But, he says, they'd hope to carry on meeting in number 11, even if the government were of a different colour. But the Tories question this, and the Smith Institute's charitable status. But, I mean, the Smith Institute have Conservatives along to their meetings. I mean, your hero David Davis has spoken to them. I think what's different in this particular case is that the Smith Institute clearly is using number 11 Downing Street on a scale far beyond any other organisation, I mean, more than all other organisations put together, if the, uh, the information that's come out so far uh, is accurate, hundreds of times over the past few years. And it's an organisation that has financial links to Gordon Brown's inner circle. Is it really right that an organisation should be virtually using uh, using number 11 Downing Street as an alternative office on that scale and at the same time have such close links to, to Gordon Brown. The Conservatives also cite the fact that Brown's long-standing close aide Ed Balls, now a Treasury Minister, worked as a senior research fellow for the Smith Institute for eight months between leaving the Treasury as an advisor and getting into Parliament two years ago. He earned a lot more from them than usual for staff of London think tanks. The Smith Institute wouldn't tell Newsnight how much they paid Ed Balls, 
for his eight months work beyond saying it was the market rate but well below the hundred thousand pounds reported in the press we had to pay him enough to get him to work for us says Will Stevenson he was wanted by hundreds of people in the city he chaired a number of our seminars and co-authored several monographs he was working for us full time he is brilliant says Mr Stevenson he has a luminous intellect he transformed the way we think and the way we do our work. Yet now the Charity Commission's examining the Smith Institute's charitable status for the second time in six years. The use of 11 Downing Street, they say, and fellows like Ed Balls are some of the things they're looking at. They should report in a few days. So what's the law? Simon Vile, who's advised a rival think tank on charitable status, says they've got to show they're not partisan. So how would they show then that they aren't partisan? By demonstrating, if you like, that what they do to begin with is um, engage in objective research on any particular issue on which they might be commenting or uh, publishing material uh, and only reaching conclusions in the light of that objective research rather than starting with uh, a preordained political agenda in relation to those issues. It looks a very grey area. You only have to look at the websites of charitable think tanks such as Demos, Centre Forum or the Policy Exchange to see that they too have strong links with political parties. If the Smith Institute's broken the rules, perhaps others have too. And things got hotter tonight when Guido Fawkes, a right-wing blogger, claimed the Charity Commission had threatened legal powers against him to gain evidence from him. All rather embarrassing, especially since the Chancellor suggested that the Brown government, in contrast with the past, plans to be pure white. Michael Crick reporting there. Coming up on the program.